from Louisiana and still not. And you call yourself better than Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have been repented. Even the queen of Sheba, the Lord says, will sit in judgment over the people of today because they refused to hear the word of God. Even she took the time to go hear the words of Solomon. But yeah, we don't have time to come into the house of God. And the main reason why people don't want to come into the house of God because they know they will be changed. Especially when they hear about this anointing. That's why they avoid the churches that are filled with anointing. They got them on map quest. Don't go there. Don't go there. And you definitely don't go down there. <laughs> yes, they do. On Google Earth, too. Just spin the globe, yeah? <laughs> the main excuse you hear, and I've heard, we've all heard, is that people don't want to come into the house of God because there's too many hypocrites. Well, well, wait a minute. You got hypocrites in the club. You got hypocrites in the gangs. You got hypocrites over in the... Well, I can't say that place. Where they caught the Republicans. And you have the audacity to speak against God's house. And you don't think God's going to revisit those words in judgment? Every idle word will be brought into judgment. He says in 14, I will break down the wall that you have dogged with untempered water. I'll bring it down to the ground. Don't play with me, God says. So that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, it shall fall, and you are going to be consumed in the midst thereof. And you will know that I am the Lord. So the question is, why is it that only when people, right, are buried on a 10 feet of rubble do they think about God? Yeah. Only when that world went and took their house and put it 500 miles down the street, now you want to think about praying. Yeah. God through Paul told the Galatians, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow. I don't care how long you've been poked. Did you hear me? I don't care how long you've been poked. I don't care how many churches you built up. If you sowed wickedness sometime in your life and it has not been revisited to you yet, you need to get ready. Because some things don't come at you till 50 years later. You did all your laid up when you were 18 and looking good. Football star at 24. Now you got kidney failure. Talking about Lord, why? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Messing around on your wife, and all of a sudden she leaves with a pool guy. <laughs> huh? When that happened? Last night. Why well, do you know? I saw the whole thing. And you have the audacity to get mad. How can she do that to me? Well, how can we do that to her all that time? We don't want to hear that. Don't you be deceived. God is not mocked. I didn't say it wasn't right. I'm calling the scripture. Whatever you sow, that shall you reap. And you mad at me. Ezekiel continues in verse 15. He says, Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered water and will say unto you, The wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. To wit, the prophets of Israel will prophesy concerning Jerusalem, which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, thus saith the Lord. When God tells you I'm about to judge a city, you need to vacate. Go on vacation. Do something. Be anywhere but at the time God told you. Likewise, verse 17, thou son of man, 
I need you to set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. Brothers, you ready? Say, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the women that sow pillows to the armholes. Did you hear what he said? Oh, baby, won't you come and lay down? And won't you let me comfort you a little bit? Let, won't you let me really discern what the Lord was trying to tell you in church? Laying up all up on them. Number full of mess and sin and sickness. Number AIDS on two feet. They show, uh, they sew pillows to the armpits, armholes, and they make kerchiefs or handkerchiefs, if you please, upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Did you hear what he said? Will you hunt souls of my people? Brothers, there are women out there who are gunning for you. Did you hear what I said? Married, non-married, no ring, ring. They're trying to come for you, and they're nothing but demonic witches. I can't repeat what I had to say earlier. I know y'all don't look at me the same no more. This is serious business. Our souls are on the line. This is the tactic of the enemy because if the enemy can remove the head of the house, the children and the wife are helpless. You say, well, why is that? I'm not saying the woman's not strong, but God put me in my place. He put us in our place to watch over our families. Well, how's that? Through by prayer. Why is that? I'm the priest of my house. I ain't preaching no sexism. I'm preaching holiness. I'm supposed to love my wife. Until death. Many people love their wives till she get an attitude. Well, she dealt with yours for the last seven years. These women hunt souls. In verse 19, wherefore thus saith the Lord God, behold, I'm against all these pillows, all that soft lingerie, wherewith you hunt souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt, to make them fly. Your curses also will I tear. And God says, I'm going to deliver my young men out of your hand, and there will be no more in your hand to be hunted and you shall know that I am the Lord verse 21 because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad huh verse 21 I'm at 22 now thank you therefore you shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. Saints of God, understand that the hand of God is for you. And it's going to be a horrible thing when God allows us to witness the destructions that God will begin to bring on the earth. And some grounded planes and people being late for the marathon ain't nothing compared. That's a nuisance. That ain't no trial. That ain't no tribulation. That's a nuisance of geography. But the word tells me that when God is angry, mountains begin to melt. And they become rivers of fire. And we don't yet see the signs. There are those in the church who have a gift to see spiritually what someone is going through, but use that gift to manipulate them. To make them feel out of place with God. Do you hear what I said? 